Hi, Jim Salmons here. You know, um, I get people who actually will make comments on our videos or photos going, why the heck does he have so many rods on his kayaks? Um, and I'll tell you, simply put, the techniques and conditions and target species for me can change multiple times in one day. So I don't want to compromise by trying to do something with a rod and reel that's not made specifically for that. So I like to have a rod that's ready to go for every technique and every species that I might run into on a day. So first off, of course, one of the rods that's on the back of my kayak is simply my bait catching rod. You know, it's, it's a fairly heavy bass rod, makes it easy to catch bait. And that way I'm not having to take the sabiki rod off or the sabiki hooks off and swapping them out for a lure if then I want to use this as a bass rod. So I have a dedicated bait catching rod. So there's one of the rods that's on, you'll see on the back of my kayak. Number two, of course, if I am going to be live bait fishing, I want to have a setup for trolling. So a nice lever drag reel, which are perfect for live bait fishing because I can bump the reel slightly into gear, put some pressure on that bait, hold it in place. Um, this would be the same setup that I would use for trolling. I would also have a uh, lever drag set up like this for uh, vertical jigging. So there you go. I gotta have something to troll that live bait I caught. So there's number two slash three. The next one I'm gonna have is a star drag long rod for throwing the surface iron. If we're seeing fish coming up on, on top, I wanna have a rod that's set up for throwing it. And the reason for a star drag versus a lever drag is you get a little bit better free spool on a star drag than you do on a lever drag. So what does that mean? Well, I'm gonna get better casting distance. So a longer rod, star drag for throwing. So there's number four. So rod number five. You know, I go out there targeting uh, yellowtail white sea bass uh, offshore type species, but if the conditions change on me and I don't want to be offshore or those fish just aren't happening, well, I'd like to be able to slide inshore and target calico bass. So for those, I'm usually throwing plastics and it's cast and retrieve, cast and retrieve, cast and retrieve. So having a nice low profile level wind reel for those constant casts is the way to go. So that's number five. Now number six here is one that I don't use a lot. I'll be honest with you. I'm not a big spinning reel guy. But if I'm at a location where the fish are really gonna hit poppers well, the big poppers I'm talking about, having a spinning reel is a little bit better way to go. If I try to throw poppers with it, a conventional star drag reel, um, the difference being is, is I'm throwing an iron with the star drag and it's more of a straight grind. So you're always keeping constant tension on the line. With a popper, it's a rip and wind, rip and wind. So you're picking up a lot of slack line. If you do that on a conventional reel, on your next cast, you're much more likely to backlash. So with a spinning reel, it is much more efficient for picking up slack line and recasting. The, the loose line is not as big of an issue. So for big poppers, I will bring with me a, a nice size spinning reel. So there's six rods I'll have on my kayak just on any given day. Usually I'll have two set up for trolling. So you can see how that adds up really quickly. So, you know, that's some of the gear that I'm using. If you have any questions about any of this gear, please put them down in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Give us a thumbs up on the video and make sure you subscribe to Kayak Fishing Tales.